Welcome back. In the last video, we made the animation for the lower body of this character. That still needs a bit of work, but not to worry, we'll get to it. In this video, we're going to work on the upper, upper body of this character. So let's get started with that now. So I'm just going to turn on overlays and stop this animation. Go to the first frame, turn off perspective, and go to the front view. Now I'm going to select the pelvis control and what we want to do here is to copy the curve values from this control onto the chest control. So let's go to the animation tab, select the pelvis control and I'm just I'm going to isolate the Z Euler rotations for this. So I'm just going to select, click here and then shift edge to isolate it. It was already isolated but in case you don't have it, uh, then I can do a to select all the key values and then just control C to copy them and then I can select the chest control all right for for the chest we have we need to make at least one entry for any copy pasting to work so I'm just going to press I and set the rotations for this control here so this now I can do a drop down like so uh, select the Z Euler rotations, shift edge to isolate it. You'll see all the other eye icons turned off and I did that. And then I can just do control V to paste it like so. Similarly, go back to the pelvis uh, control, select the Y Euler, turn off the Z, A to select everything, copy. Now this doesn't work exactly like I wanted to. So do note that the low point is on the down over here. But when I go to the chest and turn this off, turn that on, isolate that, control V, you'll see that the down is over there, uh, not where I want it to be, but that's okay. So what I can do here is Alt A to deselect everything, select this bit, add a cycle modifier, and then do G3. Well, no, that's not right. Uh, control C to undo that or just right click to undo it. In fact, because I didn't finalize it. Now I can select everything with A and now I can do G3 to move it uh, to where I want it to be. So now you can see these two curve values have been copied to, to the chest control, but that's not quite right because it's a mirror copy or rather it's an exact copy and what we want is a mirrored copy. So if the pelvis is turned this way, we want the chest to be turned the other way. So what I'm going to do is select all of these, do control M and then by values over value equal to zero and that'll just invert everything. So now if we look at the layout or let me just go into post mode here, you'll see that this thing is uh, turned that way while the chest is pointing the other way and similarly for the twist it is twisted back in this direction on this side while the leg is in that direction on this side and the opposite on the other so using the graph editor we very quickly made made it exactly the way we want it to be now this is obviously way too much rotation on the chest so we can dampen it down and we'll do that next so back to the animation uh, panel and let's see what we can do now we probably also want to add a cycles to the z, z values here so i'm just going to select this bit uh, the, it's important to have the cursor on the first frame whenever you add a cycles modifier so i'm just going to do that now so we have a we have a smooth transition on entry and exit for this graph now what we can do is to well let's just select this and i'm going to press g and see what this value does okay so this is the this controls the twist so i'm more interested in this one so let's try this again g and well we have to select this frame first now we try g and you can see this it turns it sideways now i think this value is a bit too much so i'm going to do shift edge to isolate this curve and then do a to select all of the keys then i can do s to scale it y to lock the axis and then i can just bring this down like so and 
now if we play the animation you can see that it has changed and it's not quite as extreme as it was in the past but we kept the z what it was so that the twist backwards is what it used to be but the sideways motion is dampened to a great degree now so i'm just going to stop this and bring back the overlays go to the front view and then back to animations i'm going to bring back both of these curves and because they both have cycles i can do a to select everything g and then minus one so what that means is that we've just added a bit of lag to the rotation on the top part of the character so the pelvis will move first and then uh, the upper body will follow it a little bit later so just a bit of lag here now back in the layout let's go into pose mode and we can work on the arms now before we get into this we have to look at another tool that comes with blender so i'm going to select this shoulder clavicle control here and then just do calculate uh, 1 and 26 so this this contact the the last one is on frame 25 so one more than that okay so 26 and i will just select tails and do okay so that, that'll give me a kind of a, a graph here of, of a path of motion so similarly i'll do the same for this thing tails and for this thing tails all right so because of the way we constructed this animation using the graph editor we get this sort of figure eight for free and this is exactly what we want so the animation for the arm is just us manipulating this figure eight into different shapes now the first thing i'm going to do is adjust the shoulders a little bit now if you see here these shoulders kind of pulled back. Now I used UE5 script to match this character's pose to be the same as that of the Unreal Engine 4 uh, mannequin. And the epic A pose has shoulders that are really swept back. So first I'm going to fix this. So I'm just going to select this shoulder control here, go to the first contact position. And let me just take the top view with uh, 7 on the numpad and then what I can do is uh, R to rotate Z to lock axis and just bring this forward something like that and then I can do control C and then shift control V to fix the other side and as you see as we make changes to the body all of these motion paths get updated as we go along but sometimes you have to manually uh, click on this button here to update these paths okay so this is looking okay for now now what I want to do next is to turn this off and I'm going to modify some of these options here so I'm going to turn off the torso we are not working on the legs right now and I'm going to bring in the IK controls for the arms and I'm going to turn off the FK controls for the arms. Okay now, well, maybe we can keep the FKs just for reference. Now, because recording is off, anything I do here is not going to make any changes to the animation. So I can just set this to IK and then move the arm into place roughly where I want it to be so rotate it like this go to the side view grab this move it like so and you know just put it roughly in place like that
that seems well enough to start with. We can always adjust this later. So now what I can do is um, select this IK control and then do snap FK to IK. All right, so the FK controls get updated. Similarly for the other side, snap FK to IK and go back to full FK mode for this one. Same for the other one and then now we can turn recording back on. I'm going to turn off the IK arms and then select both of the FK bones, both arms, and then do I and save the rotation so our contact position for the first frame gets saved. Then I can do Alt A to deselect everything and then just select this arm and copy this pose and then select the last frame and then paste it over here as is. Right? And then we can go to the center uh, contact position, take the side view, I will select just this upper arm here, rotate it forward like so, and there we go, there are our figure eights. And animating the arm is just manipulating these figure eights to be of different sh shapes. So we're going to we're going to work on this side first and then we'll do the second arm. Okay, I'm just going to isolate this one arm. So that would be the right one. And then we can add some additional keys for this lower arm. Okay, so we have a key for the first contact position. So I'm just going to add one for the second one. Rotation, and then we all already have one for the third one. I'm also going to mark the passing positions. So rotation on this and rotation on the other pass position. And we can also update paths. So these uh, colored positions are where there are keys and the other ones are where there are no keys. And blue is in the future and green is in the past. So as we move forward, you know, it's going to go towards blue and green will be behind us. Okay, so we have keys in the middle. We have keys on the, on the extreme forward and backward position. So I'm also going to put keys on the ups and downs. So rotation here, rotation there, rotation here, rotation there, and update the paths. Okay, so let's look at uh, this bit over here. So I'm just going to go to 10 and I will rotate it just slightly forward. Okay, so select the arm bone and rotate it just a little bit forward. And then I'll go to 16. So you can see this is 10 right down opposite it is 16. And I'm going to rotate this forward as well. Now what this is doing is it's compressing the distance between these keys. All right, so for motion paths, the longer this distance is, the faster the movement will be. All right, so we can see it very clearly just from the motion path. So right along here, the arm will be moving fast and then it'll slow down, it'll slow down. You know, more this part will be moving very slowly and then it'll speed up and just gain speed all the way back here. Now let's do something similar for the other side uh, at the back end. So we'll go to frame 22 and just move it a little bit forward like so. And then on frame four, we can move this back as well. Now, if I play this, uh, the motion might be a little jerky, but that's okay. We can go to the animation uh, panel here, the graph editor, and we can try to smooth out the curve here. So let's say we get rid of some keys just just to make it a make these make these transitions a little bit smoother. Now we we don't make change make any changes to the location curve, so we can turn those off, and we don't make any changes to the scale curve. So it's just the rotations that we have changed.
Okay, so that's a little smoother. You okay? I just picked some keys at random and then obliterate them. But you might want to plan this out a little. So if you have a particular motion in mind, you may, you will have to pick and choose. But you know, I just this is a really short video, so I just picked a few keys at random and just smoothed out the curves. So that's the basic idea here. So now we're going to do something similar for the hand. So let's just go into pose mode. Same thing for the hand. Uh, I'm going to store the rotation values for the passing position, the second contact, and the other passing position. Okay, so now I can just rotate the hand Okay, for the other side, let me just get the turn off. Okay, first let's just get the IK for the other side first. Okay, I'm going to turn off recording for this. Go to the second contact position. Well, at the first contact position, this hand is already out here. And I should probably turn these off as well. So cancel those. We don't need this anymore. And do we have keys for the first contact position? Yes, we do. Okay, so for the second contact position, we need to move this arm back. The recording is off, so I can switch to IK without it messing up the animation. And I will just move this arm back like over there or like that. Then I can just snap the F case to the IK and I can turn on recording again, um, get rid of the IK arm and then just Select all of these and do I rotation and then Okay, I have to switch to FK first and Then I can copy these three positions and put them on the last frame So it's like this and now this arm is moving as well Okay, and you can polish the movement of this arm just like we did for the other one. I'm not going to in this video because it's getting a bit long and this is, well, it's not good, it's not great, but it's passable. And especially if it's in a game 
kind of like a secondary or background character I would I would use this. That's it for the upper body. In the next video, we're going to see how we can export this animation from Blender and get it into Unreal Engine with the proper epic skeleton. If you enjoyed this video, if you want more of this type of content, please hit the subscribe and like buttons. It helps a lot and thanks for watching and see you next time.